Hey everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at some refactoring techniques I found useful in Rider. Some of them are available in Visual Studio, but just not, not as crisp as in Rider. Again, if you want the extended trial for Rider, there is a code in the description. Go check that out. So the first on the list is signature refactoring. So let's uh, take a look at this interface. I think it doesn't really do anything and its implementations don't do anything either but the important thing is is in big solutions you might have an interface and it may have a hundred of implementations and let's say that somebody asks you to change some functionality in the software and that requires you to change this interface right so what you would do usually is you would do something like string message right so we add the message and then uh, we then go find the files everywhere that it's broken and we go change the thing, right? So in Writer, uh, what you do is you press Shift R and this allows you, brings up the option basically to change the signature, right? And what this will do is allow you to set some uh, methods on this and basically change the signature of this function. So let's go ahead and change it to Boolean, right? So this will now return a Boolean it will accept a parameter of string and let's say maybe we'll grab a message and let's also accept a boolean maybe we want to force something and uh, perhaps uh, let's go ahead and make this optional right and this triple dot doesn't matter for now what we want to do is just go ahead and click next and what it will do now is sort of try to prompt you for what you might want to do with these newly added parameters so first is up is string message. Uh, I'll say leaf called non-compilable. I'll correct uh, calls myself. Uh, so let's go ahead, click next. And next one is the next parameter I said, which is bool force. I, tr I, I set it to be optional. So let's go ahead and just use false here, right? So let's click next and let's see what it does, right? So it changed this uh, function. And if we go to the implementations things, again, it changed this and set the parameter to be false by default. Okay, and if we go into program, this is where I was uh, basically implementing this interface, right? So, and here it just basically says to do, this is what you need to fix, right? And this is where I would pass a string. So this is essentially a very useful feature. Uh, doesn't look, if it doesn't look useful now, uh, when uh, you come to a point where you have to refactor like 50 of these things, trust me, you will be happy you have this. Next thing is, again, we'll make use of this iThing interface and we'll just go over creating implementations of an, this interface, right? So usually what you would do, you may, maybe go into a folder, you would say like, right, create my class and this will be a stuff. And then you would say, right, implement from iThing and then you'd implement the interface, right? Uh, you could do this or let's say you go straight to the interface, you go create derivative type, uh, you give it whatever name you want, right? Uh, implement whatever you need to do here. And then if we go to shift R here, we can go ahead and move it to a folder. And this is where we go ahead and extract this class, right? So this is implementing the interface as well as extracting this class from somewhere. And uh, here's where we can essentially choose wherever we want to extract it from this folder, right? And again, choosing it is pretty easy. And uh, when you move stuff, again, if we look at the extract folder, it adjusts the namespace for you, etc. Format a little bit, looks nice, right? So that's for the extraction stuff. It comes especially useful when you're only prototyping stuff and uh, when you're building things, it's very useful to have everything in one file especially when you're doing test-driven development or something like that, and then you want to extract it to files, this is where it really comes in handy. Again, this example might not be the best example of productivity, but this is just to showcase the feature. Next feature is also very useful. It's about transforming parameters. So let's say uh, throughout writing code, you haven't given it too much thought and you kind of sort of went ahead and uh, you've been adding parameters a method and now you have like five four six parameters whatever usually you'd not want to have more than three so five is already overkill uh, so what you would do is you press Control shift r again it's for refactoring uh, and it's this option at the bottom transform parameters 
So let's go ahead and click that. And here a menu will pop up again. We can make this bigger if we want to. And here you would essentially, what you want to do is you want to extract parameters into its own class. So let's now go ahead and do that first. What we will do is we will create a public uh, void do the thing. All right. So this will be a method that will uh, essentially call this um, do big function. Okay. So here we have it calling it. Now let's see what happens when we extract stuff into its own uh, essentially class, right? So let's go ahead and I don't want name. Let's keep the name. The rest of it we will extract. Let's call this something like user info. All right, and let's click next. All right, and here you can see what happens. Uh, it will create a class for us outside of the class where we've been using it, and again. We can use the ex, uh, the extraction function move to folder wherever we need to move it, right? Uh, it has these private sets. So what we could do, we could press Alt Enter and press Enter here, and that would remove this parameter. Also, what you can do is again press Alt Enter, and if you go to the right, it will give you more options in terms of where you want to apply this refactoring technique, right? So let's do it in file, and what it will do is we'll remove these. Uh, private setters generate a code across all of these fields and if you do it for your whole solution anywhere where it finds this pattern in the solution that will do it okay so what this done for us is create a class with a constructor and uh, really it's an immutable data structure it has also applied this refactoring to the method and here as well right so again this is like a global change anywhere where this method would be called this is essentially where this refactoring would be applied. Okay, so the next thing, uh, this is not a major refactoring uh, technique, but this is something that I like that Writer provides you with, right? Throughout your coding uh, career, you're gonna make dumb mistakes, right? And Writer is just really good at highlighting them and allowing you to quickly fix them, right? So something like this uh, where this is already highlighting the condition and then you just type that out right so you just go alt enter replace by conditional operand and it will remove the other stuff uh, quickly really wherever it hi highlights stuff simplify conditional operation uh if you're not sure what was happening there uh we basically look if something contains we return true and because this is really true itself these kind of changes may not be ap apparent uh, from the start but this is the stuff that writer highlights right so again, uh, a for loop, we have an array of messages. We make a for loop that's a depending on an integer. Again, we can go convert to for each and change this to something like M. And you can see the refactoring is really crispy, I'd say. String, convert to enumerable. It's these kind of things that uh, if you have old kind of code, an old code base, you can go ahead and... Uh, have a visual on what is old and what can be converted to other things. Uh, another thing I, I uh, liked, I, I didn't expect this when I was using Writer to help me out, but stuff like this, for example, it, I use this, this sort of things in factory sometimes, I use, but mostly use switch statements. But uh, sometimes when you have a lot of if statements and conditions, uh, Writer really knows how to sort of simplify them a little bit further. And again, if you use ReSharper, you're going to know this, right? So convert to switch. If we take this a little bit further, convert to switch expressions. And this is the sort of thing that it comes up with, right? And then we can just go ahead and replace this with this. Like this, right? And maybe make this an expression itself. And the last thing, and, and it's very useful, is again just spelling mistakes right it makes spelling i'm bad bad at spelling it makes it so much better uh just already knows what you would like to spell and uh, like just really if it doesn't already know because there's too many variations again it's very easy to spot and correct yourself right especially when you're writing comments or variable names you know you don't you don't want to embarrass yourself Okay, so here's another one of my favorite ones where I've uh, made quite a lot of use of it in my personal project as where I had this sort of ad hoc way of displaying pop-ups. So when I'm in ad hoc is I get to specify what gets to display and how. So I have this 
a component w to which I pass parameters and then it controls what message, what icons get to be displayed on it. And uh, then I introduce sort of a default message response from the server and uh, I could just grab the data respond uh, that, that got returned from the server, pop it into this uh, function and that, then it would do it on its own, right? But before that only I had this display pop-up function. So what I did is I selected the display pop-up function, control shift F, and here is where I could find everywhere where this display pop-up function is used. And I could distinct between, right, is this an ad, ad hoc function? Or is this something, if I can find one, if I'm still using somewhere here? Uh, did, 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 okay, so here I'm bringing up a function into a component. And wherever I use this function is down here, right? So this is the sort of stuff where I'd grab data from the server, I'd pop it into this function, and this should really be an, uh, a default pop-up instead of a display pop-up. So this is where I would find this sort of thing. I would edit the code straight away here and then rename it. And this is sort of uh, up here, sort of becomes like a checklist. And one thing you can do here is you will notice most of these come from my solution, but some of these come from like build files. So you can narrow it down either through a directory, right? So you can go into your source and then you no longer have the build files. So you can essentially have like a global search, but also like a scoped search at the same time. And you get different options of how to filter by what you want to search. And really the, the game, the, the deal breaker for me is this window here where I can see the code that I'm about to change. So I don't have many open files and really I go, I select one, I change the code, I, and then it sort of disappears from the list. Right, this will be it for this episode. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed these refactoring techniques that I most certainly take uh, advantage of. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to use the code for extended uh, trial period. And see you in the next episode.